Hello crafters and welcome to Peter P Crafts Online brought to you by From Picture to Page and Beyond Paper Craft Shows, our scrapbooking, mixed media art and paper crafting community. Now I'm your host Michelle Brown, Creative Director from Picture to Page and I'm so excited to be here for a crafty weekend with all of you. Now Peter P Crafts Online has got over 30 demonstrations with our local retailers and some special guest artists. So for all the details head over to our website from picture to page and beyond.com.au we can see the full three-day program catch up with any updates get all the links to the retailers and our special guests and of course while you're there make sure you're on our email list because then you will get all the notifications first as well as any specials and everything else that's going on now of course we would love to thank our sponsors firstly to uniquely creative who are really passionate about making beautiful stamps dyes kits and embellishments and they've got a fantastic creative club kit club that comes out every month that gives you everything you need to really spark that creativity and also to Darkroom Door who's a family owned company and really pride themselves in having unique red rubber stamps and stencils and they do support the independent retailers and of course bring inspiration worldwide to crafters through their videos on YouTube so we really do thank our sponsors for being here and helping us this weekend now whether you're watching us here on Facebook on your live or you're watching a replay here on Facebook or over at YouTube we want to know you're there so pop in the comments say hi just like Debbie's done and Elizabeth and Val and it's so lovely to have you all crafting along with us for this weekend and now we are really excited because we have someone who is new to the picture to page family so Peter P Crafts is online with Natalie May scrapbooking hello Natalie Hi, how are you? We are so pleased to have you as part of the family. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, well, I think almost everyone knows me in Australia. <laughs> I've been working around Australia in New Zealand, teaching scrapbooking and card making for maybe 16 or so years. Um, long enough, I know. I don't look at day over 21. But um, I've been in the industry for a while and I absolutely love what I do. Um so yeah it's, it's good fun great mm -hmm. excellent and so how would you sort of sort of describe your style you sort of more scrapbooking more card making mixed media all, all three yeah I started off as a card maker uh, initially then moved into scrapbooking and I just found that it wasn't quite enough I needed to be a little bit more creative so I went into art journaling and mixed media and now I just do whatever Whatever I feel like doing, I create cards for people who are purely paper-based mm -hmm. or mixed media layouts and art journaling as well. So I'm primarily about education and teaching people how to use the things that they've already got at home or introducing them into something something else that's new and exciting to them so I'll, yeah it's great fun yeah and that's such a good point how often do we just feel like sometimes we're just buying things and not really understanding how to use them properly or go to use them and then wonder why it didn't look work like we saw at the show absolutely and we we, we do these things we get a great pretty little package in the post mm -hmm. pop it aside and then forget what we bought it for so I love the idea of showing or reminding you how to use something that you've already got. Mm -hmm. I think that's really, really important, but also introducing you to new ways of using it or alternatives with a newer product. So that's really, really important to me. Oh, excellent. So what are you going to share with us today, Natalie? Well, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Lindy's Gang Magicals mm -hmm. um, and showing, how you, showing you how to use them on a little card kit that I have available. So it's a really, really easy technique that I'm going to show you lots of different ways of using one product, um, heaps of ways. Yeah, excellent. And I mean, a name like Magicals, it could only be fun to play with. They are, and they are so very versatile as well, and that's really important. So I'm going to create some cards, do some colouring, create some backgrounds, show some, I don't know, lots of different ways of using one product and they are so pretty. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Excellent. Well, it sounds like we'd better jump into it then. We'll let you get ready. <laughs> Thank you very much. Excellent. So while Natty's getting herself organised, hello, Alicia. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Robin. 
Hi, Shell. We are so excited to have you all here with us today. And we really are pleased that we've got Natalie joining us. Um, for those of you that have seen sort of Natalie's journey over the last few years, it's really has been exciting to see her delving more into that. You know, for me, the art journaling and the mixed media side of it as well. And I haven't heard much about Lindy's Magicals, so I really am looking forward to learning a little bit more about them. It sounds like something that we're all desperately going to need. Well, it looks like Natalie is ready, so I will hand over to Natalie. And Natalie, take it away. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing today is talking through how to use and what Lindy's Magicals are all about and talking about the different things that you can do with one product. Um, I am all about education, like I said before. So for me, it's, you know, buying one product and only using it one way to me is not very good value for money so what I've got today to show you um, one of my little show specials online um, I've got a little online store uh, nataliemay.com.au and one of my specials for this weekend is this magical Christmas card kit sorry if you get a bit of reflection there but I want to show you that it comes in this really super cute little pouch um, that you get to keep and it's a good little kit where you can get almost everything you need to create some lovely cards. So you get your instructions, the die cutting's done for you, you get a stencil, um, some pre-die cut little bits and pieces, a whole wad of paper, um, some die cuts, pre-stamped images, etc., etc. So what I want to do is show you how to create some techniques that look like this. So Lindy's Magicals, Lindy's gang have been around for over 20 years. They've been around for a really, really long time. So I jumped on board with them about six years ago and I wanted to um, know a little bit more about them. But I love the fact that they've been around for such a long time and that they are a, a family business based in the States. So they, these guys here and these guys here, these are called the Magicals and they are a pigment dye-based powder. So the pigment means that they're full of colour. The dye means that they are permanent and the powder means that we need to activate it to get the magic to happen. So these are the Magical Shakers and they are exactly the same product as this, but the um, these come in a little pot. So exactly the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I am going to talk you through how I have created these four cards um, and, whoops, five cards, how I've created these cards and show you the techniques and how easy it is. So... I'll use the shakers first. So the shakers are great fun because they are a, a powder. I've just got some watercolour cardstock here. So these are a watercolour cardstock. There's a 300 GSM, so it's got a bit of weight to it. Uh, what I'm going to do is open the shaker, give it a bit of a shake first just to fluff it up a little bit. They've got a shaker top here, so they've got a two sides are open they've got the scoopy side which is the side that I don't want to be using and then they've got the um, the, sh the side with the holes in it oh what so, a clever design yeah it is it's, and it's handy because this is so easy to open and that they are uh, it's the yeah, application wise super 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 easy so I've got the what's this color called magnolia magenta gold so because they are a powder, you need to, I'm just going to sprinkle it on and I'm just lightly tapping it. I'm not, I'm not putting it on and shaking it like hot chips. Too much will come out. So um, all you need to do is just lightly tap it on like that. You can't really see that I've got, there's not too much on there, but what's going to happen as soon as I add some water to it, so this is just normal fancy Adelaide water. <laughs> oh, that is magic um, in itself. <laughs> has its own special sort of magic. Um, I'm just going to activate that powder. So water straight on top. Oh, that is magic. And you can see magic. what's happening. 
Exactly. Look at the colours so, in it. It is. Because, because magenta is not one of the primary colours, to get this colour, they had to mix a whole lot of other colours together. So we have got here, you can see there's a bit of blue in there, there's some purple, there's some red, there's some hot pink, lots and lots of things in there. So the more water I add to it, the more the pigment comes together. So if I keep spraying it, it's going to become a solid pink. I can also add another colour. So this one here is Time Travel Teal. And I'm giving it a little shake. Open it up. And I can just sprinkle it on. And I still need to activate that powder. You can see it's starting to move a little bit already. But it looks pretty nice. And I can pick it up and I can move it around. And I've got some instant backgrounds for my cards. Yeah. Now, do Just you find like you have that. to be a little bit careful with your colour selection? Absolutely. Um, I am a stickler for the colour wheel. Everyone knows that the colour wheel and colours <laughs> are my thing. Mm -hmm. um, so what is really important is choosing colours that are alongside each other on the colour wheel. So, for example... If I was going to sprinkle these two colours together, although they're gorgeous colours, when they are wet, what's going to happen is they're going to meld together. And because these colours are opposite on the colour wheel, what's going to happen is they're going to make brown. So it's really important that we don't mix these two colours together, but these ones are alongside each other on the colour wheel, so they're going to look nice and they are going to look fine. So... It's just a little bit of trusting your instincts and knowing what looks really good. So I'm just going to pop that aside to dry because what's going to happen is that's going to dry with a little bit of a gold shimmer on top as well. So I'm going to pop that somewhere safe. So that's just a simple sprinkle, uh, sprinkle and spritz technique and I'll do it with a different colour just to show you how um, how it can work with these ones here. Mm. And Natalie, what kind of card are you using? Is that sort of any sort of special card? Yeah, so this is the watercolour paper. So right. this is just a flat watercolour paper. Um, what I will do, though, instead of that, the first one that I just did was on watercolour paper. This is the cardstock that I make cards out of. It's available on my website. I think it's like, I don't know, $3.50 for a pack or something like that. It's quite inexpensive but it is another 300 GSM paper, so it's got a bit of weight to it, and that's just a plain flat cardstock. So if I'm using these ones here, as you know, obviously I can't do that sprinkle and spritz technique, but what I can do is just use a paintbrush and a dry paintbrush, get a little bit on the end here and just tap it straight on. Just like that. That's all I need. And you can see, so this colour is called Foxglove Fuchsia. Oh. And it's actually out of a set called Mountain Meadows. Oh, so this lovely. is a set that all comes together. Good value for money, these ones. So that's powder sitting on there. Now I need to activate it. And look at that. Wow. Yeah. So if I want to add a second colour to that, I would stay away from green because green's opposite purple on the colour wheel. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with Stormy Sky. Ooh. I love this colour. We so love again, people brave with colour. That's exciting. Oh, look, I love – I mean, don't get me wrong. I love a little vintage. I love a little old school sort of, you know, pastels. I don't I don't love pastels. If I'm, I'm an all or nothing sort of person. <laughs> so, um, All right, so that's a bit of the Stormy Sky. And then straight on there, just like that. So now I have got a good punch of colour. Oh, it's actually quite so, purpley grey. It is gorgeous. Or is that just how so it's mixed? Yeah. It, it's just kind of coming together a little bit because it is wet. Mm. But creating backgrounds like this is super easy. And because I'm working on a flat cardstock and it's a little bit more porous than watercolour paper, what's happening is that it's soaking in a lot quicker. Right. And I'm just moving it around. Um, there's a couple of bits on here that I haven't dissolved where these intense bits of colour are. So I can just spray those out. 
and run that color around. Yeah, and that's so another get some... yeah another really good example of of understanding what you have and then knowing what Absolutely. it looks like on different types of paper. Absolutely, and and the best thing to do is just keep on playing with it. It's all about trial and error. Um, you're never going to get good at it if you don't take a risk and go. I wonder what would happen if. Yeah, great point. I think that that's really really important. Um, so quick little background there. Uh, so that is how I have created the background on this card. So you can see through this little Christmas card here um, that the background is a little bit purple and a little bit blue there. Yeah. So it yep, looks really, really easy and effective. Um, so these little ones that I just showed you, they are what are called flat magicals. They don't have any shimmer to them. Right. So these guys here, they all have shimmer to them. Something else I can do with these is I can make a little paint out of them. So if I take this gorgeous little mountain meadow green, and although it looks yellow in here, I've only got a super small amount on my little spoon mm -hmm. and I'll take wild, ro I can never say this, wild rose rouge. There we go. It's wild, a bit of a handful. Wild rose rouge, yes. Yes, wild rose rouge. Um, and stick that into there and I'll pop a bit of this lovely emerald green in as well. And what I'm doing is I'm making up, now, I'll make up a little wash to paint with and colour some images. Um, because it is a powder, this is a it's something that you can mix with just about anything. So I can mix it with modelling paste. Oh, okay. To make a coloured paste. I can mix it with isopropyl alcohol to make my own alcohol inks. Mm. Um, hand sanitizer because we've all got access to that at the moment. Yes. <laughs> you can mix it with hand sanitizer to make a alcohol ink type um, product as well. So there's lots and lots of ways of using. Whoops, I think we've just lost your oh, video feed yep. there. Oops, sorry. Oh. Okay, we've not snadly all together. We'll get her straight back. Hold on. Okay, back to you, Natalie. All right, sorry about that little interruption. Is technology just doing its thing? Um, okay, so what I was saying is I can mix it with anything. So I've taken my powders and I'm going to activate them and turn them into watercolours now. So I have got some, just some water in a pipette and I'm going to tip it straight into here and you can see what's happening. I'm just making, oh, I went all out with the greens on this one, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Green's my favourite colour. There we go. All right. And then that one's a green too. Okay. So now I have created this little wash that I can paint with. So if I'm a card maker, for example, I can now get a stamped image. Here's one I prepared earlier. Oh, well done. <laughs> um, and I can now colour this image just like I would with using watercolours. Right. But the difference is because it is a dye, what it means is it's permanent 
and it's not going to reactivate again later like watercolours can do. Yeah, which is fantastic um, for art journaling because you want to be able to build up those layers and yeah. not disturb them. Oh, absolutely. And I've got a couple of pages here I'll show you in a minute in my art journal. Um, but the other cool thing about this is it's it's got that shimmer to it that is going to settle on, settle on the top. So even just colouring it like that, um, is, is going to give a beautiful finish. Now, this has been stamped using uh, one of the paper rose, like one of the paper rose stamps oh, and okay. is mm -hmm. one of the Christmas ones, which are really nice. And I've stamped using black archival ink. So, oh, yes. of course, you've got to use black archival ink because I'm adding water to it and I wouldn't want it to run if I was to use a different sort of ink. Um, it's going to affect the integrity of my image and that's going to run. So I find that if I um, use archival, then I get to keep the image there nice and sharp. So that is all I have done with that and it and it's, works great. So this is on the watercolour. So you can see that the, it's all sitting on top still. Yeah. It just and adds the colour so easily. It does. The other really cool thing about this is if I test this colour first and go, oh, I like that, but if it's a little bit too um, punchy and if I want to tone it down, I've got full control over it because all I have to do is add a little bit more water. So ah, yeah. it's it's then becomes a, um, a lighter shade. It doesn't have to be as, as full on. Mm. So um, I don't have to heat set it. I can just let it sit and dry while I work on the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I would normally do while I sit and colour. So, yeah, really, really easy to to use. But like I said, it's got that ability to be able to be solid rather than a um, rather than activate again if I was to accidentally tip my glass of wine over it. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so that is how I have coloured the images um, in my little card kit. So really, really simple and really, really effective. Um, and the colours, you know, you can choose lots of different colours. There's such a huge range. Yeah. Um, so you can see in the background where I use that lovely sprinkle and spritz technique. Yes, that I did we can see the light catching that. Yeah, so that's come up really nice. Um, what else can I show you? I want to show you a little bit about... Um, Oh, actually, I might show you a couple of scrapbook pages that I have done using these products to show you, again, how versatile they are. Mm -hmm. So this is a scrapbook layout where I have used some stenciling in the background. Oh, lovely. And then did a bit of a sprinkle and spritz technique, exactly like I did on that first card, mm -hmm. and just popped it aside and let it dry. And what has happened is that... It, that colour has popped. I've got that gorgeous shimmer sitting here and it, look, it works really effective. So perfect for scrapbookers. Yeah, and um, what a photo you had to add there. <laughs> yes, I'm very good at having a laugh at myself, I can tell you. Um, here's a bit more of a masculine one. So this is using die cuts in the background mm -hmm. and then using those beautiful magicals over the top just to give it that lovely shimmer. So it doesn't have to be bright and girly. It can be a little bit more vintagey. So you can yeah. see that lovely shimmer that sits on top. Mm. Um, what else have I got? That lovely, oops, hang on, sorry. Oh, there we go. The um, Those lovely bright colours, if you love something a bit bright. Oh, wow. Yep. So the, the colours that I've used here are right in this set here. So... Mm. Um, and using some of those 49 and market um, little elements that I've got on special this weekend. Mm -hmm. So really, really nice and bright. And this was really easy. This was this layout was just about painting on some colour, making mm. it really lovely and simple. So that is a couple of things that you can do with magicals. Mm -hmm. They are exactly that. So lovely and magical. Um I'm going to show you next how to add them over the top of stenciling. Ooh, so okay. I've got a couple of stencils here. So these ones here are stencil girl stencils. Mm -hmm. They are really, really nice to use. And all I have done is used a little modelling paste 
um, through a stencil. So I will show you very quickly my lovely, lovely creative mess here. <laughs> um, my tool of choice for putting on modelling paste is a catalyst tool. This little guy is a um, – it's got a, a bendy tip. It comes clean really, really easily. But they are my go-to tool for putting on because if I let it dry, it just peels right off. Um, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of modelling paste on my on my tool here mm -hmm. and modelling paste through a stencil is going to dry with that little bit of body. So – um, I'm putting on about the same amount as I would if I was <laughs> putting peanut paste on crumpets. <laughs> <laughs> Just a nice. Well, and that's lovely. the challenge with, with peanut paste or peanut butter, isn't it? Everyone uh -huh. uses a different amount, uh -huh. but still, exactly. experiment. <laughs> exactly right. So just a little bit of modelling paste. And this one is a nice modelling paste that is going to dry totally white. Peeling that off is just going to leave a lovely little impression there. Mm. Um, I would normally just wipe over a uh, baby wipe over my stencil to clean that off. So that's left a really, really nice finish. Um, with the Magicals, here's one I prepared earlier. So on the card in the kit, which is this one here, I used a stencil in the background, which is included in the kit, mm -hmm. and then we put some silver over the top. Oh, okay. So exactly the same as what I've done here. So I've got that um, that beautiful stenciled image, and now I'm going to take a stormy silver, mm -hmm. give it a little bit of a shake. Ah, so Bring straight over the top on. of the dry paste. Absolutely, straight over the top. Slide all of these out the way. And now I just need to activate, activate that. And again, because silver is not a colour, I don't know if you can see. Yes, it's like a little rainbow. It is. So I can leave it like that because it's kind of nice and pretty. Or I need to, to get more of a solid colour, I need to let all of that pigment come together. Mm. And because it's just water and it will dry, I can put on as much water as I like. It's not going to change how the paper um, looks or anything like that. And then it's done. And I can build on that or I can add a second colour to it if I like. Mm. But that is something that I'm happy with. Um, and I would just pop that aside to dry. So that's how we've created the background of this card here. So, like, what did that take me? A whole 20 seconds to do? Yeah. And, and I don't think it looked hard. And that's the whole idea. It's supposed to be an easy process. Yeah, it's probably so, just the model paste drying time and the water drying time. That's exactly. Gonna... Yeah, exactly. So, and I can use my heat tool to dry that off, and and get a really nice quick finish for those impatient people. <laughs> um, you know, I can also grab another colour and and sprinkle some over the top of it. So a little bit of stormy sky. I can build on it. I'm one of those people that just can't leave it alone. Yeah, keep playing. Yeah, and I love that these are creating quick and easy card fronts. Mm. So they are building something, you know, I'm creating a background for something that I can then add a, an embellishment to or a sentiment to later on. As a card maker, I like the idea of using paper all the time, mm. but I also really enjoy the I made it myself feel to it. So, um that's still got a lovely silver shimmer to it, but it's it's used that stormy. I've changed the colour of it now mm. by putting a tiny amount yeah. of that stormy sky. Oh, lovely. So, now, Shell was just really, asking about the. you're oh, going to show us some of your journals. I am. Let me grab those for you. So I've got my little, my little baby journal here. So this is my little small dilutions journal. Uh -huh. Um what I love about these is it's really, really simple to create whatever you like in it. You're only limited by your imagination. Because with Magicals, I'm using water, I have to seal my paper first with gesso. Right. If I don't seal my paper, the water is going to soak right in and it's not going to move around. Yep. So this particular page I have stenciled. Across, I've done a full coat of gesso first and let that dry. Mm -hmm. 
and then I have stenciled across the top and then done exactly the same thing, that sprinkle and spritz, mm -hmm. but I've tilted the journal to let, let the drip come down. And mm -hmm. you can see that drip come down. Okay, so keeping it nice and simple. It doesn't have to be complicated, but sealing the page is really, really important. Mm, yeah, it makes um, a big difference. It sure does. Um, if I was using acrylic paint in my journal like that, then that moves around a lot differently. Mm. But with – there we go. Here's another page. So here um, with the magicals in the background first, so I've had to completely white gesso my page first to seal it so mm -hmm. it becomes almost waterproof. Stenciled straight through the middle here. And then I popped a little bit of stamping on there as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the background is puddling the, so I use the, the magicals exactly like I've got them here in the little palette. Mm -hmm. And then you can see exactly what's happened. You just puddle them on, let them dry, mm. go from there. So not super complicated. And then this is a page that I did live on Facebook a little while ago oh. um, where I combined the magicals in my journal with some distress oxides. Mm -hmm. So I, I, there's no reason why I can't get all of those um, those different mediums and put them all together. So mm -hmm. so did you use them as layers or how did you use yeah, the magicals? Yeah, absolutely. So with, yeah, with this page, this is another one, background completely sealed with white gesso mm -hmm. to make it waterproof. I then brushed on my magicals so mm -hmm. I actually used with this particular page this lovely mountain meadow green uh -huh. stormy sky I use these colors that I've actually got here which is good mm -hmm. and just brushed them on and let them move around right. then once they were dry I, I used the new speckled egg right. over the yep. top so um with one of my little one of my new stamps mm -hmm. so it's it's really really handy to mix those things up. And if you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know if it's going to work or not, just give it a go. Yeah, exactly. I mean, how, I've, I've really got that theory of how bad can it go? Why can't you? <laughs> exactly. And those are very it's, cute little houses you've got there. They are. These are the Scrap Effects mini houses and these are on a rice paper. So right. these are available in my online store and they're only $3 for a sheet actually. They're fantastic. The rice papers are brilliant for putting in your art journals. Oh, so um, I, I love to collage with them. They work beautifully. But you, like I said, you're limited by your imagination. Um, I'm trying to find another one in here with those collage papers but yeah you can you can really just add them to anything they're fantastic so um so going back to a bit more of a vintage sort of style mm -hmm. these are a couple of card fronts that i've made using the magicals right. and going for a more of an older style and i don't know if you can see if it's coming up on camera that it's got a bit of a blue tinge in the background. Yeah, you can see the so, blue on that one. Mm. Yeah. So that's the, the shimmer that's in the in the product sitting oh, on top. Right. Okay. So a really, really clever, versatile thing <laughs> like that. So it doesn't always have to be about bright and punchy and super bold. Mm -hmm. um, they can very much be about something a little bit more muted. Um, and stenciling in the background again with the magicals on the top. Mm -hmm. Now, to, to be honest, this particular project, I think I created maybe six or seven years ago, oh. and the colour has held up so beautifully. Yeah. Uh, and that's because the magicals are a dye. They yeah. are really, really easy. Um, a couple more cards that I have created so you can definitely see what's going on in the background here. We've got that lovely sprinkle and spritz technique. Mm -hmm. And then stamped images, give them a good colour and off you go. Mm -hmm. Super duper fun. Oh, excellent. Right. So I'm just going to colour a couple of images here um, and show you how, how quick and easy they can be to colour. Yeah, um, well, we're nearly done for the afternoon, Natalie, oh, so perhaps beautiful. just pick one and away we go. Beautiful. I can certainly do that. 
So these stamped images here are from my new stamps that I've just released. Oh, new stamps. Tell us about Absolutely. that. So I decided that I needed to bring out my own stamps. Oh, so awesome. these are a red rubber stamp that I have hand-drawn and designed and turned into something that I absolutely adore. And they're designed for art journalists and card makers with these really lovely little images on them. Uh -huh. So I, I really loved the thought of going for a red rubber. We all know how much we love red rubber stamps. Yes. I mean, there must be a reason Tim Holtz is st still sticking with red, red rubber and, and all of those, some of those companies still use those. And um, Rachel from mm -hmm. Dark Room Door still loves red rubber as well. So I've gone for red rubber. So mine come out um, like just like Rachel's where there can be a solid piece like that and you can just trim yeah. around. Oh, and cut. lovely. So they've got some sentiments on them as well. Um, really, really easy. But they're all my little hand-drawn images, um, something that's a little bit more unique yeah. um something that i realized that i thought was missing in the market yeah. so and i have no doubt there are many crafters just longing to design their own stamps that's just fantastic uh, and now i'm looking for time to do some more i just need a few more hours in the day guys if anybody yeah. can help me out with that that would be spectacular <laughs> indeed so very good but yeah lovely fun and quick and easy quick and easy little um card front and then i would to finish something like that off, I would grab a one of the stamps oh, that I've done, mm -hmm. mount it onto just a bright coloured piece in the yep. background. There we go. One oh, like that. Fantastic. Yep. And it's quick wow. and simple. So yeah. limited by your own imagination. Yeah. And the images are great. So you can sort of be quite detailed if you need to, or you can also yeah. sort of be quite loose for what a bit yeah. of time. Yeah. I was about to say. So, and that's, that's exactly... Um, that's exactly what I do is I, I go for more of a loose, a loose sort of look. Mm -hmm. So, um, I noticed somebody's just commented there saying, where can you get your own stamps produced? Well, I can tell you what, it took me years and years and years and years to find the right person to create a good quality product. Yeah. It's certainly not an easy process, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, I, I do love the idea of designing something that my customers are wanting, which is fantastic. So, yeah, yeah really, really good indeed. Excellent. Uh, cool. So, yeah, lots of lots of easy techniques, um, and especially if you're a card maker, it's completely up to you on on you know what you can what you can create to to suit any sort of card that you're making. So, whether it be coloring coloring something like this, and I honestly can't be making that look difficult for goodness sakes <laughs> um, but as you can see being quite loose with it blending a little bit of color off the side moving it around quite quickly when that dries that'll just dry up a treat mm. um, I'll show you these are the ones that we did earlier uh -huh. that have just dried up off onto the side here so the very first one I did oh, has yes got we can see that sparkle in it, in it. Yeah. yeah so that's from the shakers so they should last the average crafter a good two years if you don't spill it on the carpet. <laughs> oh, no, none of us would ever do that. If you do spill it on the carpet, um, I highly recommend vacuuming it up immediately before your cute little bulldog runs through the house and tramples it everywhere. Oh, gosh, um, yes. Which can be a bit of a mess. But, um, but no, look, I'm, I, they're a great little product to use and, and really versatile. So... Uh, I think that that's really important no matter what you're creating. Yeah. Hopefully I've given you lots of different ideas. I on... think you have. Well, let's get your camera back up and have a quick chat. Fantastic. Thank you. Excellent. Wow, I'm just so in love with those magicals. Like Natalie said, there's nothing like a product that you can easily take from card making to scrapbooking and, and art journaling, knowing that once it's dry, it'll be um, it'll stay there and then you can stamp over it without it moving again. So that becomes really important when you're layering things up. So fantastic. So Natalie, thank you so much for joining us today. I understand you've got some specials for us this weekend. I do, I do. Online this weekend, we have got 15% off all paper collections 
and 15% off the Lindy's that I have just had a bit of a play with. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got some great specials on 49 and Market Ephemera packs mm-hmm. and which are some, some lovely little die cuts. Um, Paper Rose A5 papers are also madly discounted as well as a few other bits and pieces. Today only mm-hmm. um, I've got stamps at 15% off and stencils mm-hmm. are 15% off as well so mm-hmm. that is until I go to bed tonight mm-hmm. so tomorrow I'll have a brand new special oh, okay so you are uh, early to bed or late to bed <laughs> tonight I might be a late to bed bit late to bed excellent Indeed. and we've got the nataliemay.com.au website linked here as well so everyone should be able to find that very easily absolutely just want to say the other cool thing is you only have to pay for postage once this weekend ah, excellent so what we do is we look after you. On your first order, you just pay the standard flat rate postage. So if you decide tomorrow that you see something really cool that I'm doing because I'll do some more little demos over the weekend, if you see something else, you can go in and grab that and at the checkout you just select the option called no judgment. <laughs> because there's no judgment here because we're crafters. Yep. Um, but the no ju- judgment shipping is one cent. Right. So what that means is <laughs> we will collate uh-huh. your orders. Yep. So we will join them all together and I'll post them out on Monday morning, oh, Monday excellent. afternoon. Oh, that's such Making a it lovely easy thought, for Natalie. You guys. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So really, really fun way of enjoying your weekend and not have to worry too much about the dollars because I do have a pretty great special tomorrow and I do know that there's another one on Sunday as well. Ah, excellent. And so where is the best place to find all of those details? Sure, Mm nataliemay.com.au. Up in the top left hand of the screen, you will find show specials. Mm -hmm. Uh, Easy there for you. So they will change again tomorrow morning, Mm -hmm. the daily deals. There's some kits in there. There's um, all the paper collections. Everything that you need to see, you will find in there making it easy. So got a nice little pre-loved section as well of some pre-loved stamps and stencils um, Mm -hmm. if you want a bargain. Yeah. Excellent. Fantastic. And, of course, I can find you on Facebook with, like you said, some demonstrations throughout the weekend as well. Yeah, absolutely. If you head over to Natalie May Scrapbooking on Facebook, I have got my business page there and my personal page. Um, But what you can do is I'm going to be doing specials. You'll be able to see what the specials are, of course. And then I'm going to be doing some live demos throughout the day. So I might do another one this afternoon, maybe a little bit more this evening. But there will be an alert going up saying, guys, half an hour, I've decided to, to do a quick demo and show something new or give you a walking tour of the studio or whatever it might be yeah excellent oh well, Natalie thank you so much and we're really excited to have you as part of the from picture to page family for this weekend wonderful thank you so much for having me excellent. and I hope you have an amazing weekend we will thank you so much we'll see you soon thanks Natalie okay. bye guys Excellent. Well, I hope you enjoyed those magicals demonstrations as much as I did. I really just want to jump out and get my hands dirty. So, of course, make sure you pop a comment, say hi. Natalie will go back and answer any questions later. Of course, share us with your friends and I hope you have a crafty day.